Here's a building that's clearly designed to inspire, Chicago Vocational High School. One proud alum, Lee Bay, grew up to be an author, photographer, and architecture critic. It is really a spectacular building, with the finest non-skyscraper art deco, art modern building that you will see in this county, I think. Wow, uh, that is a hell of an entrance right there. It is, you go up those stairs, you feel like you're, you're going to something momentous. Yeah, I, there's, there's like an effect of that if you're a kid walking up to this school, right? If you're a, a potential student, you're a freshman, it's your first day of school. I mean, that's sending you a message. Oh yeah, that you're coming to someplace important and you're like a gladiator, you know, <laughs> go, you know coming in and, and up those stairs to, yeah. to, do, to do that. And it just, you know, it just underscores the importance of education, and, and, and I'll even go one step, the importance of education to a working class uh, uh, community. That we're not gonna build you a barn or a box or a thing that's like a warehouse, but we're gonna give you something that brings class and beauty to the things that you're gonna learn. So what was the function of this school? The, you know, the function of the school, you know, going back to the origins of it, right? So built in 1941. 38 says well, right there. Well, see, that's not right. It's not. It's not right. It's no, not no, right. No, it was supposed to be built in 38. They didn't build it until 41. The school leaders and the city leaders, they saw accurately the 20th century as one that was increasingly mechanized, right? So the idea here on the southeast side, which is, which still is, which was especially then industrial, the idea was to create a school for boys that would prepare them for that future. And there was a wood shop. Then there was auto shop, metal shop, I mean, you know, preparing people for jobs. The tops of the columns are each marked by, you know, some vocation that was taught here. Uh, you got bricklaying as number two. Architecture actually is number one. It's a T-square and a column and an ar half of an arch. There's a drill a press drill and press. a bandsaw up yeah. there. And what was your trade that you learned? Uh, mine was print shop, so I learned to operate uh, a printing press. Now, I think that's kind of an interesting thing. You, your, your trade was printing, and you became a book author. It, it's funny how, how life is, right? I mean, in, in fact, the bug for writing was born here. I mean, in my senior year, my English teacher, Tom Doyle, said, um, you know, you write well. Do you ever think about journalism? And Lee's journalism career eventually brought him full circle. I wrote a book about the architecture of the South Side because I thought South Side architecture was overlooked. And I included this school in it. And you know, and you know, and we can be honest, there's reasons of race behind much of this. The city is, I mean, when you look at tourist maps, particularly historic ones, you know, the, the rest of the city is taught not to go far south. As a result, this wealth of architecture, schools, churches, buildings, park space, you know, has been largely uh, overlooked by the rest of the city. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lee says a glaring example is the story of two identical high schools by architect Dwight Perkins, one on the north side and one on the south. The north side school, Carl Schurz, has been a city landmark since 1979. Bowen High School, its twin, they opened the same day uh, on the same year by the same architect and they look just alike. Uh, and it's built, not landmark? And it's not landmark. It's not even, not only is it not landmark, uh, but as the book mentions, when the city is making the case for landmarking Shures on the north side, they list other Dwight Perkins buildings and don't list Bowen. It's which is, twin. Which is twin, yeah. Um, well, that really tells, that tells you something. That right? tells a story, right? I mean, if, if that building can be overlooked and it has a twin, you know, then any building can be, can be overlooked. Lee has photographed and documented dozens of south side gems, like Liberty Baptist Church in Bronzeville, Pride Cleaners in Chatham with its swoopy, swinging 60s roofline, and striking homes of every style, including this Japanese-inspired summer cottage by Frank Lloyd Wright in West Pullman. Lee says even some buildings by Chicago's most famous architects, like Jeannie Gang's Lavazorio Community Center in Auburn Gresham, don't get the attention of buildings by those same architects downtown and on the north side. South Side architecture, not overlooked by the people, the 700,000 people who live here, obviously. Uh, but 700,000. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a city within the city. And it's just now being seen because younger generations and you know, people who might, like myself who are writing about this thing are kind of pushing people, go see this stuff. It's worthy of the trip.